Welcome to the Princeton Longevity Center video series on preventing heart attacks. I'm Dr. David Fine, Medical Director at Princeton Longevity, and in this video we're going to discuss stress tests, what they mean, and how they are used. Stress test is primarily intended to be a tool to look for severe blockage in an artery. That's a very useful test when somebody has chest pain or other symptoms that may be indicative of severe coronary artery disease. But as we'll see, it's a very, very limited test when it comes to looking for the presence of early plaque that may not be severe enough to yet cause symptoms but can still be putting you at very high risk for heart attacks. The way a stress test works, very simple. We increase your heart rate in order to increase the demand for oxygen and blood flow in the heart muscle. By monitoring your EKG or performing other tests, we can look to see if there's an area of the heart muscle that cannot increase blood flow sufficiently that has something we call a limited functional flow reserve. Functional flow reserve is simply a measure of how much you can increase the blood flow through that coronary artery. If you have a severe enough blockage present, then you can't increase the flow enough to meet the demand. In general, it turns out that the point at which the functional flow reserve begins to be impaired is not until you have roughly about a 70% narrowing in an artery. Any, or, any narrowing less than that is likely to be too minor to actually impair the maximum amount of blood flow that you can get, and it isn't really until you hit about 70% that the amount of blood flow that you can increase through that artery really begins to taper off. The problem with that is, as you develop coronary artery disease over the years, you gradually may be narrowing down an artery so it becomes more and more blocked. Doing a stress test, regardless of what type it is, whether it's simply just a treadmill test, whether we do a stress echo, a nuclear stress test, we're not going to pick up anything until you have at least about a 70% blockage. At that point, you have advanced coronary disease, and this is really a late diagnosis of the disease. The reason why? Because most heart attacks are going to happen in arteries that are less than 50% blocked. So a positive stress test is an indicator of a severe blockage. This is a useful test for determining whether or not you have disease that is bad enough to cause you symptoms such as chest pain walking up two flights of stairs, but it is not sensitive enough to pick up blockages that may not yet have reached that level, but are still certainly more than enough to put you at risk for a heart attack. By the time you have a positive stress test then, you have severe disease, you've probably been at very high risk for a number of years, and really at this point, because you have a significant blockage, the only real treatment decision we can make on the basis of a stress test is, is that bad enough to put in a stent, or does it require bypass surgery? But this is not really an effective test for picking up early plaque that is not yet symptomatic. Because we can't pick up non-obstructive disease, disease that is not yet causing a 70% blockage, and most heart attacks occur in arteries that are less than 50% blocked, this is simply a poor predictor of heart attack risk. And in fact, the way that most heart attacks actually happen is that as you develop plaque over the years within the wall of the artery, you have a soft center filled with cholesterol and other materials that is separated from the blood flow by a thin layer of tissue. And if that tissue ruptures, what we call plaque rupture, that causes the formation of a blood clot within the artery, and it's actually the clot that will block off the artery, not the plaque. It's only a very late event that the plaque becomes severe enough that it blocks off the artery. But by that point, you've already been at high risk for quite a number of years. So how do we pick up the presence of coronary disease earlier and treat you before you get to be at high risk? Really, the only way is to look directly at the coronary arteries with a scan. Here I show you some examples of what a typical heart scan can show us. Here we have a cross-sectional view through the heart with the breastbone in the front and we're starting above the heart here and here is the aorta with one of the coronary arteries coming out of it. This is a nice normal looking artery. In this patient these white spots represent the presence of calcium deposits within the plaque in the arteries. Wherever we see calcification, we have coronary artery disease there. This patient has mild to moderate disease. Here we see a patient with much more extensive disease. This patient is likely at very high risk for a heart attack, has very severe disease, but also would very likely still pass a stress test, and this disease would go undetected unless we actually use the scan to look directly at the arteries.